Hello, SVC football fans. Getting ready for uh, week number seven. Hard to believe that we're getting this deep into the year, but uh, before you know it, we'll be checking out more and more computer points and, and looking at postseason run. Thank you, as always, to Dr. Chris Good for all the support here on the YouTube channel as we cover uh, all of our student athletes to the best of our ability. And uh, great job by John Bruce there on the on the website and, and continuing to have the, the league leaders and the scores and stats and all those different uh, aspects as well. Um, you know, as, as I as I look at SVC football, you know, we have those three teams at the top. We continue to visit each and every week, and you know, I, I would say this week that um, uh, Paint Valley's got to be on a little bit of an upset alert. I think first of all, with Paint Valley, we talked about the schedule ramping up. I think it's fair to say with Paint Valley, probably three of these last four games, you could argue it's the three best teams they've played this year. Certainly, three of the top four, and you know, Piketon. I've labeled them as a dangerous team, and and you look over the last two weeks, they they have a couple things not go their way there in the Zane Trace game. That game could have went differently uh, last week. A, a costly turnover kind of turned uh, what could have been a seven seven game, and then all of a sudden you're staring twenty one nothing in the face. Again, to their credit, they come out and they battle in the second half, and they get the big run from Wilson and and uh, go down and put some points on the board and. You know, they just come up a little short, but I think what impresses me the most about Piketon is the defense they're playing. It makes them very, very dangerous, as I've said before. And uh, in, in that particular matchup this week, I think Paint Valley just has to, you know, really focus in on, on what's going on and, and, and take care of the little things. You know, what, what's what's funny about Paint Valley is, you know, Carson Free just walking out on the field and just being there, his presence kind of really puts pressure on the defense. Are you going to play him straight up? If, or are you going to roll a, another guy to him? And then all of a sudden you're rolling another guy to him. And, and now you've got Robertson uh, running between the tackles and Faber pulling it back and running a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, the, these new weapons that have emerged this year. You, we, we saw Willie Wheaton back on week one. We've seen Jeremy Kane throughout the, the first, you know, five, six weeks. Um, we've seen Drez Bolton Hitchens making play. They, they got a lot of, they got a lot of weapons. And, you know, so the offensive line's really experienced, really old. And um, so, but but again, the defense Python's playing, that, that's really, really intriguing. But, you know, lost in all of it's probably the way the Paint Valley defense is playing. The Paint Valley defense is really flying to the football. They're extremely athletic. And I, I think that's going to be a great game out in Bainbridge Friday night. And going back to that Python Uniota game this past week, I, I give a lot of credit to, to Uniota's defense as well because, I mean, think about it. You know, you have the the, the weird scheduling of, of uh, Friday night being moved to Saturday. And, you, you know, when I when I think back to Uniota throughout the offseason, I was thinking of this team that was going to be a more physical, uh, line it up, run it down your throat type of team. But then as you get closer to the season, you know, I think what happens is things change. You 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 lose some offensive linemen for various reasons. Uh, you're not as healthy at running back as maybe you thought you were going to be. Sophomore quarterback emerges. Keep in mind, Coy in, that, in the rainy conditions there, day 13 to 16, very efficient still. Uh, but, man, the story was uh, Cody Braden. I, I know that uh, getting, getting healthy and getting strong, uh, rushed, what, 30-plus times, I think, uh, unofficially, I ended up reading over 200 yards and, you know, uh, three touchdowns. I believe he had all three touchdowns. And you know, it's just that that's a dimension. If Uniota is going to be able to add that, you talk about an offense that gets really complete in a hurry. Uh, that's good. And, and, and two, you got to give their defense credit. They pitched the shutout there in the first half to build the 21 nothing lead. And uh, that, that's a dangerous, dangerous team. And then I, I keep warning people, do not forget about Zane Trace. I said it all the way back in week one with that offensive line. And now you got McCullough healthy, uh, and he's doing dynamic things. And you got Stewart, and you got Dunn, and you got Johnson, and I'm probably missing a couple others. I know uh, that, that, you know, they're, they're another team. And I would throw all three of those teams in there in the special teams as well. I think what's going to happen is, you know, Guys like Hanks, Matthew, Robertson as kickers going to really impact things. It's not just the ability to kick the field goals. Um, it's it's the kickoffs. It's the ability to kick it in the end zone. It's the ability to win field position. Uh, just as simple as the extra points in terms of, you know, I know in calling game on WBX, I've been working Chillicothe games this year. And, the other, you know, the other day, the Cavs, the Cavs drop one uh, 28-26, where they basically score the same amount of touchdowns, and it just comes down to not being able to produce the points after. And and it's a big factor. That's not, that's not, or shouldn't be a factor for these three teams at the top. You know, they have the ability to line up 
and, and be very successful in extra points. And, you know, I, I've said it before, the kicking game so, so crucial. I mean, think about the Southeastern Westfall game the other day. Um, Westfall, that was also on a Saturday. That was a weird situation, too, a game getting moved. You lose your home game, and then you're tied 8-8. Eight eight. I believe it was, what, 17 seconds to go, and you kick a field goal to win the game. So, again, the ability to line up and do some of those things, I think that's going to be a big factor down the stretch here. So keep, keep an eye on that as well. And we'll start looking at the computer points. We're going to have a lot of opportunities to get several teams into the postseason. Uh, we'll break that down a little bit more in weeks to come. But uh, it's going to be a real treat down the stretch here in the football league because we're going to get a lot of head-to-head -head matchups. And, um, and it's going to be exciting chase to, to the SBC championship. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out some of the volleyball coverage. Uh, we'll break it down for you uh, here on SVC Sports Talk Plus. Uh, also going to have some shout outs to our, our girls golf and some of our boys golf and the, and the jobs that they're doing. We're a week away from our cross country championships. And again, we'll try to make sure we're covering it all for you here on SVC Sports Talk Plus. Again, thank you, Dr. Chris Good. Appreciate John Bruce and all of his work on the website. Make sure you're checking that out as well. And uh, I'll get back to you here soon next week with more SVC coverage. Thanks, everyone.